Hi everyone, I'm Ralph and I like music and blinking lights. I've got a pile of unfinished stuff and thought I might use this music and blinking lights channel as a crutch to help me get things done. After all, there might be a few extra videos in it. So here's the first installment of a new segment called Seriously Unfinished Business. Um, yes. So this is the Jasper Wasp, a monosynth that I built last year from a kit I ordered from a guy on the Muffwiggle forum. The Jasper Wasp is, as I understand, a faithful recreation of the EDP Wasp, a British synthesizer of the late 70s. I didn't really know that the Wasp existed, to be honest, before seeing the kit on Muffwiggle. So it's not nostalgia that made me buy the kit, but I like checking out interesting designs. So I ordered and built one. Like the original, the remake features a capacitive touch keyboard that I find rather unreliable. To really play it, preferably using an external keyboard, or indeed use it in a studio environment, it needs MIDI. The Wasp does have a custom digital interface to link multiple units together, but that predated MIDI by at least 5 years and is incompatible to it. It's simple enough though to convert MIDI to the link protocol. And very conveniently, the designer of the clone has provided an extra link connector for that very purpose. The link interface consists of 7 pins. Four of them encode the note number. Two further ones encode the octave. And the last pin is for the gate, which quite unusually is represented by a 50 Hz square wave. To add MIDI capability to the Jasper Wasp, I built this little Arduino compatible MIDI interface board. Hang on, you might say. Didn't I just a few videos ago tell everybody not to bother building your own standalone Arduino board and now I built one anyway? Well, of course, if you need the capacity and power of an 80 Mega 328, I'd just use an Arduino Nano board and be done with it. But using a Nano would be a total waste for this simple project. The MIDI code just barely fills about half of the 80 tiny 2313's 2K of flash memory. And because I'm quite content running the 80 tiny off its internal 8 MHz clock, the whole Arduino board effectively consists solely of the 80 tiny chip. Everything else on this board is additional circuitry for handling MIDI. The code is very simple and fits on a single page. Now I did have to provide my own MIDI implementation, including hardware serial, because the standard MIDI library completely fills up the flash and then some. Also, because the code doesn't really do anything, I didn't even bother checking the datasheet to set up a hardware timer for the 50Hz pulse. I'm just using Arduino's millis function to time the pulse wave. Note and octave are output on pins 0 to 5 of port B and the pulse on D6, which conveniently lie all on the same side of the 80 tiny. I used an Arduino Nano as an ISP programmer, and after fixing a strange synchronization error by wiring a 10 microfarad capacitor from the Nano's reset pin to ground, I finally managed to upload the code to the AT Tiny. When I tried playing the synth using MIDI, I did get the signal, but with the notes somehow upside down. Checking the service manual, it appears that note 0 octave 0 
corresponds to the highest note of the wasp, counting downward. So after fixing this, I now have a proper scale. For a moment, I contemplated adding an arpeggiator, because I've got some room left in the flash memory. But then I decided against it and chose to keep it simple instead. What I did add, however, was a feature that allows setting the MIDI channel, which would otherwise be fixed to channel 1, using a simple method. The first MIDI note on message to arrive within 3 seconds after the unit is turned on determines the MIDI channel the Jasper is going to listen to. Also, to enable playing fast solos on the synth, I added a feature that is, I believe, common with monosynths, in that you can play tremolos by keeping one finger on one note and quickly pressing and releasing a second note. A short stack of currently pressed notes is all that's needed. New notes are always added to the top and it's always the note on top of the stack that is sounding. If a key is released, then that key is removed from the stack. And depending on whether it was the top key or one underneath, a new or the same top note is played. If there are no keys left in the stack, the last note is muted. Because processing any further MIDI events would require modding the synth, I decided to leave it at that for the time being. I can always change it later. But, at least for now, it's finally done. There you go. One item off my to-do list. I hope you liked this video and if so, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more music and blinking lights. Tschüss zusammen!